In today's video, we're going to create this retro RGB split text animation in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Let's go! In Fusion, double click on the empty space, shift spacebar and search for multi-merge. Connect it to the media out, then bring in a background node, press F2 on the keyboard, name it BG, change the color from black to a slightly darker gray, press OK and connect the background node to the background input of the multi-merge. Next, bring in your text node, press F2 on the keyboard, name it source text and connect it to the white input of the multi-merge. Now let's type in something, change the font. I recommend using bold white fonts like Akira Expanded, for example, and I'm going to change the size to 0.1. Next, I'm going to move the playhead at frame 80, set a keyframe for size, move one frame, frame 81, and change the size to zero. Next, I'm going to move the playhead at frame 50. Go to the Layout tab in the inspector and at center X and Y, I'm going to set a keyframe at value 0.5. And then I'm going to move the playhead at frame 0 and grab the Y value and move it to the left to decrease it and move the text outside of the screen. And if we play this back, we have our first step of the animation. Now let's instance our text. Make sure your text node is selected. Control C, double click on the empty space. And instead of Control V, Press Ctrl Shift V to create an instance of the text. Press F2 on the keyboard, rename it to Instance Text, and connect the instance to the multi merge. Now select the multi merge, make sure the source text layer is on top of the instance. Now select the instance, let's move this up a bit to have more room. Select the instance, Shift Spacebar, and search for Echo. Now, Echo comes with the Reactor plugin for DaVinci Resolve, which is a free plugin that I'm going to show you how to install at the end of this video. Now, let's move Echo here. In the inspector, Echo frames, we need 10, subframes 1, and frame 1, Echo gain 0, and gain gamma 1.3. Next, we're going to move the playhead at frame 80 again, and set a keyframe for scale at value 1. And again, one frame over to frame 81 and set the scale to zero. You can already see we have an effect. And if we play this back, you can see the other part of the effect. Now, with the echo node selected, shift spacebar again, and let's add some color by using color gain. Let's bring this down. And first things first, we're going to go to the Ranges tab and change the range from Simple to Smooth. Then we're going to go back to the Gain tab. And we're going to decrease the red gain, slightly increase the green gain, slightly decrease the blue gain, and slightly increase the alpha. Lift we're not going to touch because it's going to affect the darker areas of our effect. So we're going to go to Gamma and Again, decrease the reds, slightly increase the green, increase the blues, and slightly increase alpha. Now we're going to move to the saturation tab. And here we're going to slightly decrease the red and the green. You can match the values, it's not a problem. And we're going to increase the blue. Next, the balance tab. Here we're going to balance only the highs. So we're going to move the red cyan to the right, more towards cyan, the green magenta more towards green, and blue yellow more towards yellow. And the rest we're not going to touch. Now let's move to the hue tab. And here we're going to decrease the highs and increase the darks. And that's it for the effect part of the animation. Now let's add the final features for the stylization of this animation. Let's select the multi-merge, shift spacebar, and add prism blur. Here we're going to decrease the prism blur to around 0.06, the aberration distance to around 0.02. We're going to increase the aberration strength to 1, and the vignette options we're going to leave as is. Next, we're going to move to frame 74 and set a keyframe for aberration distance. Then we're going to move at frame 80, change the aberration distance value to 1. Next, we're going to move at frame 84, and we're going to set the aberration distance value to zero. Next, we're going to add a sharpen node 
I know this sounds counterintuitive to first blur it and then sharpen it, but we get this cool artifacting. Let me toggle sharpen off. So you see it's blurred now. And if we activate it, it's sharpened, but we get this cool artifacting at the edges, which help sell the effect. Now for the sharpen values, we're going to need an amount of 1.3 and a blend of 0 0.7. Next, we're going to add a glow. Search for soft glow. We're going to change the filter from fast Gaussian to Gaussian. The threshold, it's going to be 0.13. The gain, it's going to be 0.47. And we're going to set a keyframe for the gain at frame 74, add value 0.47. Then we're going to move to frame 80. We're going to change the gain to 2.7. Then we're going to move to frame 92 and set the gain to zero. Next, we're going to add the final two touches for the effect, shift spacebar, search for film grain. We're gonna set the complexity for the size to 0.13, the strength to 0.07, and the roughness to 0.3. After this, we're gonna add film damage. And here, we're gonna change the temperature shift to minus 0.36, the tint shift to 0.17, and the dirt density from two to five. Now let's play this back. And this is one way to create the retro RGB split text animation in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Now let me show you how to install Reactor. Now to get Reactor, I'm going to leave the link to stakeunderwater.com in the description of the video, or you can type Reactor for DaVinci Resolve in Google. And a quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Reactor. I just like using it because it's free and it has a lot of cool stuff in it. Now, once you're on the page, scroll down until you see Reactor Installer Lua. Download it. Once it's downloaded, go to the Fusion page in DaVinci Resolve, grab the installer, and drag it over. You can choose a custom path, but I advise you to just install and launch. Wait for it to download, install, and update to the latest version. And after it's done, restart DaVinci Resolve. Now that it's done with installing, updating, and initializing, the Fusion Reactor browser appears. Let's type in Echo Market, and as you can see, you can donate, or not right now. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to click not right now. And your Echo node is active. Close the window, restart DaVinci. Now once you're back in DaVinci and on the Fusion page, shift spacebar to bring up the select tool. Let's type in Echo. And here is our node, ready to use. Now, if you want to activate other tools, you go to Workspace, Scripts, Reactor, Open Reactor, and search and select another tool you need to install, update, or even remove if you want. And if you want to learn more about motion graphics in DaVinci Resolve Fusion, check out this playlist, and I'll see you in the next video.